Bam, got listen. mine cooking. What yeah. button? Got your hit, cooking. Hit your home button down. Okay. Just hit your home button. everybody we got a public hearing for the board of mayor and alderman october 4 2016 and it is 6 30. so i'm going to turn the public hearing over to ruth richardson All right, thank you mayor we do have a public hearing tonight uh one item on the agenda uh the legal advertisement was in the daily news journal on tuesday september 13th so it is properly advertised uh, the item on the agenda tonight is Ordinance 2016-13, an ordinance to amend the City of Laverne Zoning Ordinance by changing the official zoning map for Tax Map 14, Parcel 46.01, consisting of 28 acres, located near the intersection of Minerva Drive and Money Street, from an I-1 light industrial zoning district to a R-1 low-density residential zoning district. Uh, if there is anyone here tonight that would like to speak on this one item, uh, now is your opportunity to approach the podium and say whatever you would like about this item. Yes, sir. If you'll please state your name and address for the record, please. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Alderman, Attorney Jimmy Richardson, address 304 Burton Farms Drive. I come before you all tonight with roughly four dozen signatures standing in opposition of the rezoning of this parcel. We find that it's inconsistent with the area, inconsistent with the growth of the city, and inconsistent with the best interests of the folks of the people of Laverne. And we ask respectfully that you not approve this and that you maintain the status quo in the way that everything is currently set. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on this item? Ordinance 2016-13. Yes. Ruth. Yes. Uh, sure, go ahead. Anybody can speak at the public hearing. <coughs> please state your name and address for the record, please. Hi, I'm Deborah Hewen, and I live on Randall Lane in Lake Forest, and I'm also a realtor and uh, from a realtor standpoint, what they're trying to do with this land is going to be a good thing for the city and it's going to be a good thing for the people who live in that area. If you drive over there, that area is in desperate need of something good. I think the Planning Commission did a good job on looking at all the facts on this and they've made a good decision to ask for it to be zoned for R1, which R1 is so much better than R2, which our city is so used to seeing so much R2 in the area where you've got hardly no parking, houses packed together real tight. Well, I know that um, I started looking into this when I found out the mayor was for it and then all of a sudden he won for it. So I kind of got curious and started asking around and finding some things out, driving by there, doing some research. And um, R2 would benefit this area. Right now I have a listing over in Haley Hills that backs up to industrial. It's a beautiful 1,800 square foot house on one acre, I mean on, on one level, and a nice big yard. Everybody should want to buy this house. It should have already been sold 10 days ago. It's not selling because probably close to 40 or 50 agents going through there are saying we love the house, but guess what? It backs up to industrial. Nobody wants industrial in their backyard. And this industrial site that's over here has apparently been used as a dump, dumping ground for people dumping old pieces of furniture and mattresses and garbage and everything else. This is only going to improve our area. It's not going to be little bitty tiny houses piled upon people. And I talked to the guy that's wanting to do it. He's not a builder. He's not a developer. He is wanting to build like a dream house over there where he's not packed in a subdivision full of neighbors. So your traffic impact in that area is going to be very minimum. You're going to have an increase in the property values for anybody around there. Right now you've got a lot of rentals and other properties over there and they could really use some improvement over there. 
and I can't see this doing any harm at all to anybody. You may have an extra couple of cars coming and going, but that's not a big problem. And I mean, if this guy doesn't get it and he lets it go and puts it up for sale, you know who's going to get it. And you know what's going to happen. It'll go R2 to anybody that wants it. They're going to try to make the highest and best use of that land, which will mean putting as many houses on that acreage, on all that acreage that they can possibly do. So I just don't, I mean, I see people objecting to builders and everything else, you know, and I just don't get it sometimes, you know, when you, you don't get this many people coming up against R2 development, but you pack a house for somebody wanting to do R1 to build their dream house to where they're not packed in with neighbors. And I know that R2, I mean, R1 can, once you've got it that way, you can put other houses on there. But even if that happened, which that's not the gentleman's wish to do, even if that happened, would it be so bad to have all that new revenue coming in and on R1 where they're not packed in so tight? But I can tell you, this guy's probably going to sit up there on a hill with his house and enjoy all the trees and the land around him and not having neighbors in his backyard. And I mean, that's probably what his dream has been for many years. And why would anybody want to stop that? Everybody over there on Minerva and all these streets, and I'm friends with some people that live over there that objected to this. And that's why I started looking into it. You know, they're proud of their house. They've been there for about two years. It's their dream house. They like it. They like where they are. They're just worried because they've heard rumors. Well, the rumors aren't true. This is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's not like there's high rises and townhouses being packed in there. So I don't know why everybody's getting upset other than there's been a lot of rumors going on that are not true about what's going on over there. And so I hope that, uh, Calvin, you're on the planning commission. I know you've got a good head about these things, and I'm sure that you can see the value to our city and to that area with it going R1. Uh, Sherry, I'm sure you would rather see R1 than R2 or industrial over there, you know, and I'm sure that, Melissa, you've got a good head on your shoulders. I, I'm sure you can see the value of it. Tom, same with you. I'm sure you've looked at it, and I'm sure that you see the value also for the citizens that already live there and also for the highest and best use of the land, you know, is not always putting 100 houses on that. It could be putting one or two or three houses on it, you know, to increase the value around you. So I hope you look at all the possibilities and I hope you're gonna be fair to a long time citizen of Laverne that is not a builder, he's not a developer because I know everybody's got something against him, but he's not and he's not hooked up with them either. So give them a chance, let it go R1 and you know, prove yourself that you can do the right thing and I'm not even going to ask for you to vote, Dennis, because I don't think you should, because I've already heard you say that you're against it. You were, when you listened to one of the August meetings, I believe, you were all for it. Then all of a sudden, one of your friends got turned down for an easement through that property by this gentleman, and all of a sudden now you're, not against, you're against it. You don't want it. And I don't think that's fair. That's not the way you play. You do things the right way, or you just don't play at all. So I would rather you just not even vote. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, yes, ma'am. Please approach the podium and state your name and address for the record. My name is Sandy Holmes, and I live on Metal Arc Lane. I have a lot property over on Minerva. I don't think this is a good thing for the people around Minerva area because, number one, even though we hear that he's not a developer, he is a developer. He builds. And I don't think that we need that kind of traffic through there. My lot is empty right now because I can't decide whether or not I want to build a house to live there. If this goes through, I won't because it's going to be too much traffic. And I honestly believe once the can of worms is open to build one or two houses, you're going to see many more coming in out there.
And I don't think we need another lake forest over there. And I really believe that's what's going to happen. And being a real estate agent, I'm sure they would love to see that, to sell more houses. But anyway, uh, I don't think it's good for the people that live in that area. And that's my opinion. Okay. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this rezoning request? Sure. Please come up to the podium. State your name and address for the record, please. My name is Michael Hicka, 143 Hickory Street, Suburban, 37086. I'm wanting to purchase this property to build a house on it. Uh, and that's it. We okay, no more. Of course, Sandy Holmes wants to build a house on her lot. She just got done saying that. And I just want to build a house on my lot. My lot's just a little bit bigger. Um, you know, it's okay for her to do it and me not to do it. I mean, it's kind of kind of crazy. Uh, but my, uh, I talked to a lot of the neighbors here that um, were kind of sort of against it here in the parking lot today. And uh, I'm not looking, I'm, I'm not giving no easements, no water lines, no sewer lines, no, no, for nobody. I just want to build one house on this property with one driveway and that's it. That's all I want to do. Okay, it's, it's a dream I've had. It's, you know, Debbie took the words out of my mouth. I mean, she done. You know, I didn't even need to get up here because she said everything I had to say, basically. You know, I'm not trying to interrupt the neighborhood. I'm not trying to disturb the neighborhood. I'm nothing at all, okay? I just want to build a house on this property. It's kind of uh, in a bad area for industrial. I mean, you, where you, you're going to come up George Thomas and take a left on Minerva and come into the property with industrial? It don't really make a whole lot of sense. Um, it should, Mr. Walden himself said at the last meeting we had here, you know, in front of everybody that, why was it ever even zone industrial in the first place? I can't believe it, you know? I mean, he, he was, you know, I heard him talking about it. I sat down with him a few days ago about it, and all the reason he was for it, and the reason he's against it now is because people were complaining. Well, I've talked to uh, Mr. Youngblood and everything, and uh, he's not against it no more. None of these people that were against it, I pretty much ain't, all right? They, now that they understand what I really want to do. Um, I don't want no subdivisions. I want the property, I want the deer coming through, I want the animals, I want that. Okay, that's all I want. I want. To, I just. I don't want no neighbors. Uh, that's where I stand. So you know, please go R1. You know, please do. Even Mr. Walden said, "Hey, if you went down there and changed it, go pay another three hundred bucks and change it to agricultural, I'll vote for sure yes on that." It's exactly what he told me. Him and I sat right there. I sat in that chair, and he sat right there with that man in the tie. And he says, "I'll for sure go yes if you change it to agricultural." And uh, I'm like, "Well." You know, I go, I guess, he, and then he told me to roll the dice. He goes, come in here and roll the dice today, and that's why I'm here. So I guess I'm rolling the dice, and uh, I hope you all go R1. If not, I guess I'll go back down, spend another 300 bucks, and try to go agricultural. Then I got his vote. So that's about all I got to say. Please go R1. I'm not just trying to build me a house on a nice piece of property. I don't know why everyone thinks I'm a developer. I mean, I move out of houses and bring uh, Miss Holmes' brother home. Uh, Frank, that's all I've done, but uh, I'm not a developer. So, thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this rezoning request? Please state your name and address for the record. Matt Church, 1527 Flaxman Drive, Laverne. Now this brings out the voters when you're talking about rezoning property. And I believe every speaker up here has been right. Everyone has spoke. The need to change it is probably a good need. No one wants an industrial building behind their house. The agricultural part, I think it's a home run for everybody involved. But what's Blossoming out of all this, everyone in this room has been screwed by some individuals on that board in rezoning partials in the past. Lake Forest started with 700 homes. Right here in this board meeting. I'm going to build 700 homes. Polygon homes is what it was called. 700 homes. How many do we have now? A lot. 
But let's go back to infrastructure. Let's just say Mike does want to put two houses, one house. It's his property. It's his right. The downside of it is the easements. People have already asked for easements. So if you do rezone this, and I say if you do, and I kind of over the years have learned how Mr. Waldron thinks. He's thinking right now of not rezoning this property because of the vote pool that will assist putting Mr. Jones in office. Think about that. That's because that's, that's, Mr. Jones needs all the help he can get. The way he's treated some of these citizens sitting out here. I've seen it with my own eyes. So rezoning the property has benefits and it has negatives. The benefit of rezoning a property is to get it out of the industrial lane. No one wants, I, I'm in the industrial business, guys. You don't want it behind your house. But if you even do the research before, before it was industrial property, what was it zoned prior to that? Bruce, can you answer that? I know you have the answer. I don't know. The county map says what it was rezoned. That's all you got to do is look at it. I don't know. I believe it was zone R1. I don't know. I haven't looked it up. You haven't looked it up? No, sir. You're our city manager? And this is going up for vote, and you haven't looked up what it was, what the actual zoning was when we annexed from the county. There was a time, this was county. County zoning clearly tells you what it was. We became a city, we incorporated. The individuals that were in charge changed certain areas of the town. Mr. Waldron, you were here, you remember. You know what that property once was. But what better way to get the community riled up for that vote? Because you need all the help you can get. You You're struggle. to me now, Mr. Church. Thank you. You do. You need some help. Okay. You've been malicious to some of these people. You've been malicious to me. You've been malicious to a lot of folks. So everyone's got that little knot in their throat. And this is what... This is how it's supposed to be. This is how you're supposed to take your time on a vote. We've had 27 minute mayor and alderman meetings this year, 27 minutes. From the time you hit the gavel to the time you ended the meeting. We're spending some time in, on this. And, and guys, you can speak. We can stay here all night. They do it all over the country. We're one of the fewest towns all over the country. I mean, they, they stand here and they talk. Just because the meeting starts at 7 doesn't mean we have to stop talking. Because there's no restrictions in a public hearing. There's no three-minute rule. So what I'm asking you today as citizens, stand up, express your views, whether you're for it or whether you're against it. Because you're never going to get this opportunity again. They've restricted the mayor and alderman meetings to three minutes. We can talk 35 minutes today, as long as we're respectful. They can't shut us down. We have a full house. Please, I am begging you, don't let them play this game. Hold them to the fire. We, we very seldom have this opportunity to speak. And what an important issue. One man wants to build his dream house. That may be true. I don't know. Some people think that he may be doing zero lot lines. You know why they think that? Because it's happened. It's happened in this community. Four houses, five houses to an acre. I've seen it. Go to the Dardens on Sand Hill and ask them what agreements were made. They sold some property on a promise across the street. You got townhomes. You got little kids walking on the curb of Sand Hill down to the dollar store. That's the real issues. It only takes one vote to make a change, and that's yours. And if you can't see what Dennis Waldron's doing tonight, because he's friends with a lot of you guys, but a lot of you, he's lost a lot of your support over the last couple of years because he forgot who put him in there. Now, he won the mayor's race fair and square, and he'll be mayor for two more years. 
But no way, shape, form, or fashion will I allow Dennis Waldron to use his popularity to help put Calvin Jones in office and use the citizens of Laverne, their anger, their emotions, and their property to rile everybody up. It's not right. I'm begging you. Let's keep this meeting going all night. Because if you stop the money, you stop the vote. These guys got plenty of time. Right, Mr. Jones? I know you just want to say something. Because that's how you get. You get angry. That's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this item? My name's Nicole T. Couple. I live on 1619 Piercy Street. My house is the second street or a second house that you come to if you turn off Minerva. My question, and I'm not quite understanding, how quickly can it go from R1 to R2? Because that is one of our biggest issues is that we don't want townhomes behind us. We've been there for 20, almost 20 years, and I'm happy with having the deer come through. I'm happy with having raccoons, snapping turtles, whatever else that wants to come out of that woods come through. I'm not looking forward to trying to have traffic come through all the way from Sand Hill as one of the options to come out of the housing development that went up back there. So I'm trying to figure out and understand. That was one of the reasons why I signed the petition because that was my greatest fear is that we're gonna have all these townhouses and all this traffic that will be coming through because they'll connect Minerva all the way to Sand Hill. Could you please explain to me what would happen if it becomes R1 and how quickly could it be eas easement taken over for those roads? Would that happen? Could any of you answer that? And this isn't really the forum for question and answer, but I will say that you know any rezoning process has to go through these same procedures. <coughs> Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this rezoning request? Yeah. My name is David Lindsay. I live at 1706 Money Street. Um, don't know all our neighbors. I know there's at least one other house on money represented, and maybe possibly the houses that are going to be the greatest affected by whatever's going to happen here. Um, honestly, I did not realize it was zoned industrial. That scares me more than R2 does. Um, the business I'm in, we do a lot of work with industrial clients, so I know what industrial's like. So definitely wouldn't want to see that back in my backyard. Um, we live in a very quiet spot. We go out at night, it's very quiet. Even since Walmart opened, it's still pretty quiet on our street. I definitely wouldn't want to see this go R2. <coughs> if R1 keeps something industrial from coming in and this man's gonna build a house, that preserves what I've got. I know there's no guarantee. He could be hoodwinking all of us. I, I've never met him before we come into the parking lot. But our biggest fear was that it was going to be townhomes or there would be 10, 12, 13 homes. There's not a lot of property back there. There's not a lot of access. We're already seeing George Thomas and Gene being used as a shortcut to bypass the traffic on Fergus. I know Fergus is busy. I lived on Fergus for 13 years. We moved where we're at because it's a lot quieter, even though it's that close. So don't know where this goes tonight. but as a resident that's going to be directly affected, I do want to see this property as minimally affected as possible. And I, if he's going to build a house, he's going to build a house. But that's, there's still woods there. And I think that's what most of the people in that area that I'm not aware of are, are looking for, is they want that preserved. It's a, it's a quiet area. Laverne's seen phenomenal growth since my wife and I moved here almost 24 years ago. It's a much different city. 
and it's very hard to find those little pockets of quietness like we have. And that's what we're wanting to maintain. Sir, is there anyone else who would like to speak on this rezoning request? state your name again when you get to the podium. Michael Haka, 143 Hickory Street. What this man said is, I respect the one, I'm 10,000%, okay? I'm not cutting no trees down, okay? The animals are going to come through. Uh, that's what I want. That's why I want the property. That's why I want to build on it. <coughs> exactly what he said. I just want to, you know, bring it to everybody's attention again. Uh, I'm not taking no trees down, okay? I, and I burn. I mean, I, I take dead out of the woods is what I do, and I rick it and I burn. But uh, I grew up in Illinois, been down here 30 years. We had 33,000 acres of wildlife refuge around our property that nobody could ever build on, and that's where I grew up. My parents passed away, I'm here, and I got an opportunity to have 28 acres, 28.4 acres, I believe, and build a house on it. I got this opportunity, and it's what I want. I don't want to take no trees down. I want all these guys that live around me, these, these folks that live around me, to come on over. Enjoy the property. I mean, you know, feed the deer. Do what you got to do. I mean, I, I don't want to disturb the property at all. I don't want to take the trees down or nothing like that. I just want to build a home on this property. Um, please rezone it to R1. Thank you. Again, Jimmy Richardson for the four dozen petitioners here. Mr. Mayor, Alderman, we've heard a lot of vitriol, a lot of personal attacks tonight. As an attorney, you're allowed to remove yourself from the personal experiences and look at the merits of the case. And I believe, again, based upon what's before the mayor and the council, you'll see that maintaining the status quo, keeping everything the way it is, the way that it was put together when indeed Laverne did annex itself from the county is the best, the best way forward and will have the minimum impact as opposed to the unknown. We've already heard what the gentleman wants to do, and that's to build his dream home, but what could happen? We've also heard from him tonight that he doesn't want any easements of any kind, no water, no sewer. What happens when Google, Google Chrome or Google Fiber comes through and wants to add a new service to Laverne? Do we get the easement then? Do we get the cooperation then? How much of an obstacle will changing this parcel be in the future. We don't know. We don't know if he's going to build his dream home. We don't know if he's going to cut down the trees. We don't know. But we do know if we change it, he could. And if he's already putting his feet in the ground and saying, no, 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 I will not work with the city or the people or my neighbors to get just an easement of some kind, water, sewer, electricity, what does the future hold? And that's a question without vitriol, without personal attacks. It's a pure question of pure substance on pure merit. Mr. Mayor and Council, I'd like to proffer these signatures, if I could. Officer, thank you. Thank you all for your time and consideration. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this rezoning request? <coughs> I'd like to take the politics out of this for just a few minutes. This is about something that I've loved all my life, and that's homes and building. And another thing is, luckily, in 1995, real estate. Uh, I've always loved pretty homes and pretty land and pretty trees and all that. There's something called the American dream. And that American dream is to own your own home. And working with a lot of buyers and selling their existing homes, a lot of them, a large percent of them, give me their dreams about what they would like in their home. When they say they want their dream home, I'm getting a lot of people over the past five, ten years that don't want to be in a big crowded subdivision anymore. A lot of them are getting older and they're tired of all the hectic things in a subdivision. A lot of them want their dream home, the American dream, 
to be out in the country somewhere, but yet the commute, they can't afford to do the commute back and forth to work because most people have to work in a city. So with the American dream and people wanting to have their dream house, you know, we have to have land for them to build their house on. And one thing we're not making any more of is land. And I value land more than I do just about anything because it's something that you can't ever make again. And once you've got things zoned a certain way, it's just, it's usually going to be that way. Uh, we can't go back on what's been done on like Bill Stewart, where all the houses are having to, you know, have no parking and they're parking on the sidewalks. That's ugly. I know people that have moved out of neighborhoods that are like that as fast as they can because they didn't like the way it looked. It looks junked up and trashy. People are moving away from that. And I know that with this running out of land, a lot of builders have to do that type of building to make the highest and best use. One of the young ladies that spoke said that this guy's a developer. I've known this. He builds. He builds decks, uh, I think sunrooms, uh, remodeling on existing homes, uh, fences. I wouldn't call that like a builder or developer. Um, I'd say more like a craftsman. But if you own a home, you've probably sat down and you've thought before, you know, if I were to sell my house in this subdivision, what would I like? What would I like to have? A large majority are probably going to say, I'd like something, you know, where I don't have neighbors in my backyard, where I can have a cookout and I can't hear what my neighbors are saying, or I can go swimming and I don't have to worry about my neighbors looking at me, you know, or I don't have to put up fences because I'm trying to block out all the neighbors and everything going around me. I mean, we've got neighborhoods with dogs running wild. We've got cats taking over our houses, and I'm serious. We've got a real issue with that. And... And that's only happening in a neighborhood where people are just in a throwaway society where they give up their home, they move, they leave their pets behind, they let their kids run wild. You know, there's people that want to move out of that and want to get something that's quieter, more peaceful, more like the American dream that everybody has in their head at one time or another. Uh, you know, you can't do a lot of things on a half an acre or a fourth of an acre or a tenth of an acre that you can do on an acre or two acres or five acres or 28 acres. You know, if this man wants to build a house on a hill on 28 acres and have a way to get in and out, you know, that's going to help the area. And I mean, I'm not benefiting from it. I'm a real estate agent and since 1995 I have had offers to work for builders and I don't have anything against them, but I have never worked for a builder. I like being independent. I like doing and saying what I want to do as long as it's lawful and legal and ethical. I like that freedom. That's why I don't work for anybody except for my clients. And I give my clients what they want. And, and I can tell you a lot of clients that buy into these little houses that are packed on top of each other are unhappy. This is not what this man is wanting to do. This man's wanting to tie this land up. And I'm sure there's a lot of builders that would think, oh, wait, I would love to have that land so I can build a lot of houses there and sell them and make a lot of money. But this is not what he wants to do. This is going to secure this land for these people in this area. And a lot of you don't know me, and a lot of some of you do, and a lot of you don't know him. But I've known him since 2000. I had him come look at a house that I was buying to make sure it was a good house in Laverne that had been foreclosed because we have plenty of houses to, to buy in Laverne that are not brand new houses. But the thing is, he's always had this dream. He's always talked about, man, when I get enough money, I want to buy a house with nobody around me. I want to build a house with nobody around me. So why would somebody that's always said things like that all of a sudden want to just build a big cluster of homes? You know, it doesn't make sense. Sometimes everybody is not about money. Sometimes people want to do something for themselves that they're going to enjoy for a lifetime. Not about money. It's not all about money. I've got two rental properties in Nashville, and you know what? I could, I could list, well, I could, I'm not going to sell them yet, but I've got a handicapped lady, and I've got an elderly couple living in the other one, and I've got them both leased out for $500 a month. Unheard of, right? 
and they pay their own utilities, $500 a month. I know I could get $1,150 to $1,350 for each one of them a month, but I don't do everything for the money. I do it because it's the right thing to do because these people can't afford the high rents everywhere else. So don't think it's about money. Nobody does everything because of the money. Some people want to do things because they enjoy it, like having a house on a lot of land with nobody around them, like you want to build a house and you don't want someone coming through there and making it crowded. He has a house he wants to build too, just like you might want to do. And he doesn't want people around him bothering him either. And I mean, you can't take somebody else's dream away from them just because you think it's going to infringe on you by having a car or two driving past you. And I mean, there's a lot of what ifs that I heard about. What if could happen? All kinds of things could happen. Lake Forest could get hit by a tornado tomorrow and everything be torn up and it won't, might not be here anymore. 3,000 houses gone, just like that. But the thing is, you can't go on what ifs. You can go on the facts. And the planning commission's already listened to the facts. They've looked at the paperwork. They've done their research. They, they, did, their, they did their due diligence to make sure this is a good deal before they approved it to come before a vote. You've got to give these people that devote their time for free on these boards credit that they're up there because they want to make a difference in Laverne and they want to do the right thing. And I mean, they're not sitting up there because they don't have dinner to go to or things to do. They're sitting up there because they're contributing to the city to do their best to make sure that this city is set on the right path. And they're not elected, they're, they sit up there and they make good decisions. So you've got to give them credit for that. That would be like if any of you sat on a board. I'm sure you wouldn't sit up there and just make random decisions and not think about it. You would do your due diligence to make sure you did the right thing. And I think the Planning Commission has done the right thing. And I think this board owes it to the Planning Commission to vote yes for R1 zoning, which is not townhomes and all this other stuff. R1 zoning, this is the right thing to do. You all know it is, and I mean, don't let it be political. Just vote for the right reason. Don't make it political. Do the right thing. Don't vote because you might or might not get votes. Do the right thing. That's all I'm asking. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Yeah. Please state your name and address for the record, please. Neil Rogers. I live at 443 Williamsport Drive, Smyrna. I have rental property at 206 Minerva Drive. I do ask that you do the right thing, and I think the right thing to do is to do what the homeowners and the property owners around this property want you to do. I think that's the right thing to do. Um, if the majority don't want it, then don't vote for it. And I don't think the majority wants it, from what I'm hearing tonight. I don't even know if this lady lives over there or not, but I have property over there. My brother lives over there. Um, if, you, if you change it now, it'll be difficult to change it back later. I don't want to see this guy's dream home go away simply because we didn't make a change. That's not... That's not what I'm asking. There are other property he could have built on, and he took a risk when he bought this property to have it changed, have the zoning changed. I mean, that's a risk. It could have went his way, it could have went the other way, but that's the risk he took. The property owners don't want it. There's reasons they don't want it. Traffic. Um, yeah, right now, it could be just one home, but who's to say and who's to protect it from being multi-homes five years down the road. I mean, who's to stop that? Are you going to put re restrictions on the property? Property size restrictions? Are you going to put anything like that on the property? I don't know. But yeah, five years down the road, it could change. Ten years down the road, it could change. He could get into financial trouble and have to sell off half of it to make ends meet. We all get into financial trouble from time to time. We don't really know what's going to happen in the future. But if we change this to R1, we do know that it's going to be extremely difficult to change it back once it's changed. So yes, 
my petition is do the right thing. Do what the property owners around the property want you to do. Most of them don't want it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this rezoning request? Yeah. State your name and address for the record, please. Yes, my name is Paul Bishop. I live at 130 Hickory Street in Laverne. I'm just here to let you know that I've known Mike for approximately 14 years. And since I've known him, that's all he's talked about is building his dream home. He doesn't want anybody around him, except his lovely neighbors, I'm sure, but nobody close. He's not looking to build more than one house. He's been talking about this for years to me. I'm telling you that, that that's his only desire, and I will second the fact that he is not a developer. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this rezoning request? Once again, this is a rezoning request for tax map 14, parcel 46.01, 28 acres. We go from I-1 to R-1 residential zoning. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on this item? Last call. Mayor, seeing nobody else respond to if you're wanting to speak, I'll declare the uh, public hearing closed. Turn it back over to you. It's closed. Uh, uh, we'll close the public hearing.